My name is Austin Russell. I'm 40 years old and I'm a tenant farmer from Sarah's sister. I came back to my family farm about seven years ago and um, have a huge passion for dairy and um, I'm looking really to progress my business quite significantly over the next few years. Okay, so we're all year round uh, calving. We currently have about 220 cows. Um, we're a closed herd and we've been closed for at least 40 years. We're looking to expand over the next 10 years to hopefully a herd of around 500 cows. The issues I was facing with mastitis was basically there was too many cases of mastitis. I think that we were reaching levels of about 60 cases per 100 cows of mastitis and um, we certainly felt that this was not acceptable and obviously we were um, losing a lot of milk that we could have been selling. Um, so obviously the financial implications were fairly high. The average herd sale count was always around the, the 200,000 mark. Um, although the bulk tank average would always be lower than 200, but milk recording and so on would show that, that there was indeed like a, a bit of cell, underlying cell count issue. We tried various things to, to combat mastitis. Um, every cow that, that um, showed any symptoms of mastitis would be, would be treated with antibiotic tubes. We would also record all the data for, for every cow and quarters that were affected with mastitis. Basically, it felt like we were just firefighting and um, we weren't really seeing an improvement in the number of cases of mastitis. We would also uh, cull quite a few uh, high cell count cows. The problem was we were producing a lot of data, but I think that we didn't really have the right tools to, to analyze the data to, to actually show where perhaps mastitis was occurring. Probably around about two years ago, our um, milk buyer offered us, offered us the opportunity for, to enter into a more premium type of contract. And um, at that point, during various audits, um, issues with, with mastitis cases were, were certainly brought to the forefront. And it was at that point when I decided that we needed to take part in the mastitis control plan. And um, I was introduced to um, a vet called James Breen, who came and um, ran the control plan with us. He worked very closely with me for a year, um, analyzing our NMR milk recording data and um, cell count data and um, mastitis case data. He also did a kind of audit of our facilities and, and infrastructure and suggested areas where we could improve. And it was really useful to get um, uh, an outside opinion in, on, on to, into what was going on on the farm. As well as James looking at uh, various um, pieces of infrastructure, he, uh, he used um, an interesting tool called the mastitis pattern analysis tool. Well, the aim of this was to show where um, mastitis might be occurring um, in terms of the stage of the cow's lactation, um, perhaps in terms of where the cows were housed, etc. So James fed all our data into the, the tool. This basically indicated that um, a lot of mastitis was actually occurring during the, the dry period. Well, perhaps, perhaps there was a problem with the dry cow sheds, but also perhaps there was a problem with um, actual the physical drying off of cows as well. These were the areas that we looked at initially with, with, with James. We changed the, the whole dry cow system quite dramatically. Um, initially, the dry cows were housed um, or in deep, on deep straw. And 
although we littered them up every day and we muck them out at least every four weeks, um, James, well, the, the data showed that it simply was not clean enough. We changed the system and we put in um, sand cubicles and now the dry cows are housed on deep sand in cubicles. Um, they have some outside space. They have um, a large area um, in which they can eat. Um, and we just put in some carving boxes so that they can, uh, you know, have a have a comfortable area to to carve in, um, and the results were almost immediately quite impressive. Before, um, probably virtually every other cow would show clots of mastitis at carving, not necessarily full blown mastitis, but you could see that there was definitely health, high 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 cell count amongst them. Now, we rarely see clots. Um, it's really been very impressive. Within the first year, I think, we were probably averaging about eight and a half thousand liters a cow. Um, and now I think we're up to at least 10 and a half thousand liters a cow. This is milk sold. Um, so straight away, you can see that um, I mean, we're not feeding the cows any different. So um, that has been quite a significant improvement. We've also seen um, a, a, a big impact on, on um, our vet costs. Um, certainly antibiotic use has been uh, reduced dramatically, especially you know, in terms of um, mastitis tubes and so on. James also suggested that we used uh, selective dry cow therapy as well. Uh, I mean, we'd only consider using antibiotics on cows with cell counts higher than um, 200, whereas it was a blanket approach before to antibiotics at drying off. Um, so I should think we probably only use 10% of the, of the amount of um, dry cow antibiotic tubes, which is also a good saving. It's important for other farmers to um, understand that there there are people out there that 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 um, can help. You know, they're very approachable. Um, uh, having a mastitis problem is, is not embarrassing. It is, um, you know, it, it is a fact, and and often um, a few changes can make a big difference. Um, I think that um, they should try and seek uh, out a consultant who could run the mastitis control plan or use the um, herd mastitis pattern analysis tool. It isn't normal to have a mastitis problem, you know, and there are people that, that can help your mastitis.